In this problem, we have a conducting spherical shell. At the center of our sphere, we have a point charge, plus 2q, and surrounding that is our conducting sphere of a finite thickness wall. The inner radius of the conducting sphere is A, and the outer is B. Now, we want the electric field in the gap between the point charge and the conductor, as well as in the conductor and outside the conductor. So let's first do in the gap. So for R less than A, this would be in the gap, we draw our Gaussian surface in the gap. Let the radius of the Gaussian surface be R. And Q in then is simply the point charge, because that's the only charge that's inside that Gaussian surface. And that would be 2Q. So, applying Gauss's law, we have Q in over A epsilon naught. Q in is just exactly 2Q, area of the Gaussian surface, 4 pi r squared, epsilon naught. And we could simplify that if we wanted to, or we can just write it as 2Kq over r squared. So it's just the field due to a point charge, with no effect whatsoever from that surrounding conducting shell. Now, the total charge on the shell is 4q. But what happens when you put this point charge in the center is that some of that charge is pulled to the inner surface. Ordinarily, if there were no point charge in the center of this, all the charge would reside on the outer surface only. But in this case, negative 2q is induced on the inner surface of that shell. Negative. Because it's exactly opposite to the positive 2q at the center which means the outer surface, having had four, having two pulled away like that, negative two is pulled away, is going to have to have six Q on the outer surface. And that will be a positive charge. So the way I came up with that six Q is that six Q on the outside minus two Q on the inside equals the positive four Q that the shell has in total. So now when we go to do the electric field inside the conductor, so that would be for R between A and B, so this is inside conductor, we actually draw our Gaussian surface inside the conductor, so our Gaussian surface would have to be inside here, the radius is still R, now when I find Q in inside that Gaussian surface, I have negative 2q on the inside surface of the shell, plus 2q from the point charge, and I actually have zero net charge inside that Gaussian surface, which is consistent with the result that the electric field inside a charge conductor is zero, always. Okay, now we're going to go right outside everything. We're going to go for R greater than B. So now our Gaussian surface is out here. Uh, radius r once again, and now I have to add up all the charge inside that large Gaussian surface. So q in would be the point charge in the center plus 2q, negative 2 from the inner surface of the conductor plus 6 from the outer surface of the conductor, which equals a total of 6q. Or we could have just, could have just added the 2 and the 4, not really being too concerned about where the charge resides. So the electric field outside the entire distribution would be 6q over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. And once again, the entire distribution does act like a point charge with total charge 6q.